Hello friends, welcome back to Six Sigma Yellow Belt series and today we are going to uh, discuss on the measurement system analysis and this is at a yellow belt uh, body of knowledge level. Right? So uh, first would be define and describe and apply measurement system analysis and it terms. So briefly we will see what is MSA measurement system analysis and then we will describe in the next session how and why gauge R and R is used in the measurement phase, right? So let's start. What what is measure? If you uh, if you talk in terms of a project management uh, and uh, at a theoretical definition level, a quantified evaluation of characteristics or level of performance based on observable observable data, right? So in terms of a six sigma project what are we measuring? So in terms of a Six Sigma project, we are measuring mostly performances, right? Process data. So the process performance, right? This is one, right? Then uh, we are also measuring the inputs, what inputs we have uh, in a process right process performance again can be process matrices as uh, we studied earlier or the outcomes also right outcome of a processes right and this can again be sub process level or at a broad process level right and few other examples can be length uh, length, uh, uh, this is length of time, this is speed, age, size, the cost, sales revenue, this can be few of the examples, right? So, so that is what is to be measured. But why do we measure, right? The, the fundamental uh, basis of a Six Sigma project is to bring quantifiable improvements, right? Improvements which can be, which you so improvements which you can really measure right right so this is this is a six sigma project example and you can relate it to the smart goals right if you remember the smart goals measurable this is the key term here right we should be able to measure it, whatever outcome we are driving or whatever improvements we are doing. So that's the first thing in case of a Six Sigma project. Obviously, we have to establish the uh, uh, current performance level, which is your uh, current level, the problem statement, goal statement, from where you want to go where, right? Then determine the priorities for action, means you don't need to uh, completely act on each and every outcomes right so you might have to you can prioritize remember the 80 20 rule for it to chart so you can prioritize substantiate the magnitude of the problem right so we have to see how big is the problem right so we are saying for example the pizza delivery is currently um, uh, uh, the tat is very high so very high means what? If the very high actually means 35 minutes average with standard deviation of 5 minutes, then it is not a big huge deviation, right? Whereas if it is somewhere 90 minutes average and standard deviation of 10 minutes, we can say that no, no, this is a huge uh, uh, this is a big uh, uh, problem and we have to solve it. So the, to know the magnitude of the problem insights into potential causes of problems and changes in the processes right so you have to see through how exactly each and every factor contributing so say for example if the temperature the day of the temperature rises then uh, consumption of ice cream also increases right uh, or consumption of water also increases right so to, to gain insight of potential causes so temperature can be a cause there right and remember Six Sigma runs on uh, Y equal to FX, right? 
so where y is the outcome and x x1 x2 x3 these are the inputs prevent the problems and predict future performance right now when we talk about uh, uh, the first step step in a data collection plan the first step in a data collection plan is you have to baseline it right you have to baseline the problem and we have to see on the process side whatever upstream means suppose you have process uh, you have process uh, a b c d and you are considering some improvements as process a then your upstream processes also can define what is going to happen here right this this area again the back end supply chain if it is a supply chain issue or something the downstream problem can also impact this process right so we have to see what upstream factors might affect the process then what do we uh, plan to do uh, with the data after it has been gathered right so that's what uh, we do we analyze the data right now uh, something fundamental how what to measure in case of a, a six sigma project what to measure we all know the fundamental theory y equal to f of x1 x2 x3 and xn right and whereas x's are these are all the inputs right and y is the outcome though y is the outcome and we measure it we also need to measure all this x1 x2 x3 and how do you get all those x1 x2 x3 is through a detailed cypoc if you remember cypoc is supplier inputs right inputs process output customer right so this is the inputs we are talking about your output is y and these are all the x's so this we need to measure right now when we are talking about measurement right so let's take the simplest example of a suppose you have to uh, you have to measure a a4 size paper with the help of a normal scale you can do it at your home also uh, which is uh, a very good uh, example to understand uh, uh, what is uh, uh, what is measurement system analysis right so so suppose for example you have a piece of paper right you have a a4 size paper right and you have to measure this paper and you have a scale for that you have a measurement scale like this something like this right what do you do first you take the paper the step 1 is you take this paper step 2 is you align this scale with this paper next right? two is alignment third is you see vis vis visually you see what is this measurement scale what is this to this right and if it needs you to have two scales or twice use the same scale twice then first time here and second time here and then again you measure it check the measure right you can do this small game uh, 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 sort of at your home and you will find uh so what what are what is involved in this let's check this first right so there is a man or machine involved which is you measurement gauge is your scale the part to be measured is the a4 size paper and the method of measurement is how you are aligning the paper and measuring it right so that that's exactly now you can have a situation where let's take the actual abs, uh, actual size of this a4 size the length the length actual length of this is suppose 6 uh, inch right every time you measure it observations every time you measure it observation 1 let's say 6.1 inch observation 2 5.9 inch observation 3 uh, 5.8 observation 4 6.2 observation 
say 6.0 right so this it can happen observation 6 again 5.9 so but it cannot be right it cannot be 6.1 or it cannot be 5.9 either of this is true right both cannot be true because the paper has one single uh, length it, it is not changing right that that's exactly is measurement system error right so the true value there is a true value and So there is a true value, right? And against this true value, suppose it is six inch, you are getting all this data, right? So this deviation of zero point one inch minus minus zero point one minus zero point two, this all deviation are measurement errors. Right, and this is what exactly we talk about measurement MSA, right? Measurement system analysis. Now let's move towards again. Now, if you see this, which one is better here, right? Which one is better, right? Let me uh, uh, go one slide further. Which one is better in this case, right? So suppose your target is this one, your target is this, your target is this, your target is this in everything. Which one is better? Obviously this one is better, right? Because it is closer to the target. But we call this sort of patterns, what you see, this is, we call something, right? So this is the more close to the target you are, close to target right that is we call as accuracy that is accuracy right and cl how close all these points are to each other that is we call as precision right so there are two types of error one is Accuracy, one is precision. Accuracy is how close you are here and precision is how close you are, your points are to each other, right? So is it spreaded across this like this or like this, right? So for, for a performance, for in terms of a process level, for it to be performing, it has to be accurate and precise both. So all the point has to be close to each other and they again has to be close to the target or to the mean here, right? So the target here, we can align it with a mean. We can understand the middle target as mean and the spread as standard deviation or variance. Right? So this is what summary of uh, MSA is we have a variation the variation is a unit to unit variation so if you have two a4 size paper in that example what we talked about so those two papers also can have one can have 6.1 inch and one can have 6.0 that is part to part variation right so unit to unit variation then measurement system error variation is suppose we are using a scale and we have two scale, scale 1 and scale 2. These two scales are not same, right? The 1 millimeter here, it, it is also 1 millimeter here, but there may be 1 nanometer or something, 1 micrometer, maybe something, very small def deviation is there, right, between the scales. So that is measurement system error, variation, or the process in which we are measuring it. That can also be wrong. Then these are divided into accuracy error and precisions. Accuracy is first is one is bias, one is linearity. What is bias? Bias is when your true value is 6.0, your 
true value is 6.0 and you are getting different results right you are getting different different results right linearity is you are getting different different results for different different parts right that is linearity right repeatability what is repeatability so suppose uh, uh, you are measuring something uh, first time you are measuring you are getting a number of first time when you are measuring you are getting a number in the same page as 6.1 and in the same page you are you are only measuring person 1 person 1 is measuring a paper a 4 size paper he is getting 6.1 person 1 only measures it second time and he gets 5.9 right so this is called repeatability the process right this is repeatability so the process of measuring itself has got some error that's why you are getting it right what is reproducibility re reproducibility right reproducibility is when person 1 and person 2 there are two persons who are measuring the same a4 size paper and both of them are getting different different errors so it is not only you who is getting error different different people so it you cannot even use it in with multiple peoples right in scenarios it can also happen that you are measuring it everyone is getting different different errors right or one person is getting error one is not getting error so there you can say that the rip, there is repeatability is good but the reproducibility is not good right because men multiple people are not able to use the same process of measurement so this is what uh, under or overestimation of the measurement and changes in bias over time which is linearity for different different observations different different units when you start measuring you will get it different results precision is error by the same appraiser when the measurement uh, uh, are, uh, when he measures the same part and reproducibility is error by multiple appraisers when they measure each part right so i hope you understood measurement system uh, what is a measurement system in a six sigma contest and in a process site and uh, what is variation in a measurement system uh, next we will uh, go a little bit on to the gauge r and r thank you thanks for watching